right, welcome to JGB Superstars episode 8. Uh, this is the 31st show, or that's what it says on YouTube anyway. Uh, November 12th, 2009. And all oh, lad, this is from Sheffield, South no. Yorkshire. So no. we're going to do no. all episode no. in the Yorkshire no. accent, no. right lads? No. no. I didn't tell you it was from Yorkshire deliberately, but uh, it is from Sheffield. Uh, from the Sheffield Arena, which I'm not actually quite sure where that is, to be honest. Um, Sheffield? Well, it's in Sheffield, but like I, I used to live fairly close to Sheffield. I used to live probably um, 30 minutes away, probably 40 minutes, something like that. And I know like some of the places, they have a big mall. I think it's the biggest mall in England called Meadowlands. So I know that, and I know there's like an athletics track that's nearby, but that was definitely an indoor thing, so I'm not quite sure. And they also have the uh, Crucible, where they do the World Snooker Championships as well, which is in Sheffield too, but I don't know that place. All right, shall we get to match one, JJ? Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, Matt Hardy um, against, well, I would say David, David Hart Smith, but I noticed they started calling him D.H. Smith, which sounded a little bit like a British uh, store as far as that. There's a store in Britain called W.H. Smith. And every time I heard D.H. Smith, it made me think of that. Um, I didn't like that. I, I, I've always thought of him as David Hartsmith. Um, of course, he was with Natalia and Tyson Kidd because of that connection there. And, uh, yes. Jay, I was writing down one fact. I, I watched this last night so I could write down all the things. Yes. I didn't write a single thing down about any wrestler or anything that happened in the match. Yes. The only thing I wrote down was things like the Ask the Diva section. Yes. Uh, the Don't Wrestle With Your Brother. Yes. I forgot. I was more interested in that. So, and the yeah. only fact I wrote down while you were watching this, I just realized, isn't even for this match. It's for match three. <laughs> so I don't have much at all. The only thing I can tell you about this one is um, I picked Matt Hardy for our watch along tonight, which we actually already re we technically we recorded ahead of time, didn't we? We watched that first, yeah. and then we're going back to this. Um, so I picked the cinematic match because I know you like those ones. Um, yeah. When he faced his brother I on the compound. I will also tell you a bit about it. Well, you already did in the actual thing, so let people I know, watch so, it. Um, there. So Matt Hardy asked. No, 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 you already we already recorded this segment. No, tell me Good about them. Tell me about this match. That's what I want to know about. Go ahead. What happened? You took notes because I saw you. You had you actually went and got some paper today. You wrote stuff down. I heard you talk about there was a kick to the head. I know you had that. So what else happened in this match? Good job, Jesse came down. Heel cat came down. Head. As soon as we as soon as we stopped watching the cling and we just start set up ready to record, the cat came down. So we know she <laughs> wants to record. I don't know how she knows to do that every time. She hears very good. And she it's uncanny how she does that. All right, sorry, JJ, you were about to say something. Go on. Kick to the head, homie. I can see her. Stomp to the face <laughs> and a punch to the face. <laughs> what about who won the match or the finish? That Hardy won. How? I don't know. Oh my gosh, they even showed you a replay for this as well. Oh my gosh. So what happened before the finish then? There was something exciting, well, something of significance in this match that happened. Um, Tyson Kidd actually interfered and the ref told him to get out. Correct, they told him to get out. That kind of worked. was cheering. Good, yeah. That kind of worked no. as a bit of a distraction. No. And um, Matt managed to roll. It looked like, um, um, it looked like. Davy Boy Smith uh, was uh, was in the pin. It looked like it to begin with, but yeah, Matt Matt managed to roll him up, and he had him in that count for a while. But with the ref sending him away, he didn't actually notice. And I was like, oh, he's already had him for like three seconds. And I'm like, I know what's going to happen. It's going to be one, two, and then he kicks out, and he did the three. So he actually had him probably pinned for about six seconds, yeah. but. So, yeah, Matt Hardy won this one. Um, in the middle of this, we had some commercials. We had the Survivor Series. It talked about that there was two triple threats. My favorite Survivor Series commercial is the one where... Don't um, wrestle with your brother? No. It's where um, Triple H and Shawn Michaels um, is in... Oh, like they're in a war? No. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about the one from last week. Um, it, it was actually the one from last week. <laughs> and they said, this is just armless Brock. They throw it back and then it explodes. Uh huh. That was cool. Yeah, I, I've actually yeah, watched that. Yeah, plus I saw they were wearing slippers. Oh, shorts. they were. I and missed that. Too. This is why I like to record with you. You notice stuff like that that I don't notice at all. Um, I watched the event in DC, and I know that picture is kind of iconic. We actually have that picture upstairs. I got Mason like a list of posters from a it. while ago, and I don't think that's one that got hung up. So I'll look for I you. I'm pretty sure we have that one somewhere. Of course, we had the the five star pro, uh, five star commercial of "Don't wrestle with your brother no, again." No, that's the worst <laughs> star commercial. As soon as John Cena comes out, I knew what was going on there. 
and we did the Ask the Diva. So I had to explain to you what a pickup line was. Um, they basically asked the Divas, what was your cheesiest pickup line that a guy's used on you? All right, do you remember any of them, Jay? <laughs> These are all classic ones. Uh, Eve specifically says, oh, so you're Eve, can I be your Adam? Um, Natalia, and there was two people at once who had this one, and I couldn't tell who the second person was. Um, are you tired because you've been running through my mind? Oh my gosh, he's a cringeworthy. Uh, Michelle McCall, are you from Tennessee? You're the only ten I see. <laughs> Bree, someone dropped a sugar packet in front of me and asked me if I'd drop my name tag. <laughs> Maria Canales, what's that on the floor? Oh, my jaw. Uh, Beth Phoenix was asked... <laughs> Alright, tell me why this one was really bad, JJ. Beth Phoenix was asked, do you work out? Obviously, she's a wrestler anyway, but... Yeah. Why was that really bad? Where was she at the time? At the gym. <laughs> she was at the gym, and somebody asked her if she worked out. Uh, Nikki asked, are you hurt? Because it looks like you just fell from heaven. She said it was sweet, but yeah, no, that doesn't work. And Gail Kim said, just be yourself and use your own lines. And the second question was, um, I like my male friend. Should I tell him? You remember any of these, JJ? No. Basically, it was, they, all the divas seem to agree with it. Ah, just go ahead, give it a try. What you got to lose? It's worth the risk. Um, I think Beth Phoenix said if he if he doesn't really like you anyway, he wasn't a good friend in the first place. All right, I think that's the end. Oh, before we get to that next part though, you talked about some of the things that you'd seen, and uh, you said you actually wanted to have like um, a street fight match with British items. So yeah, what like the mail. Like a British mailbox. Uh-huh. And why would you want a British mailbox? You asked why there you wasn't can... one at the arena. And I was like, because nobody posts mail when they go watch a sporting event. But you event. could bash people's head on it. <laughs> well, you could. Uh-huh. What other British things did you see? You said you saw something else. Um, a phone booth. Uh-huh. And what does a British phone booth look like? It looks like a big capsule but <laughs> that's standing up. I'm assuming it's red. Yeah. That's it's normal, red yeah. And with a phone. And we got your picture in one of those when we went to Nottingham about three years ago or something like that. And what other things would you have then in a Sheffield street fight? Like, we often see those, like at Classic Pro Wrestling, like if it's in Culpeper, they'll have a Culpeper street fight. Or if it's in, I'm trying to think, like Richmond, they'll have a Richmond street fight. So what things would you have in a, a Sheffield street match then, JJ? Um, Yorkshire street tea? match. <laughs> a cup of tea would be pretty good. You can um, pour the hot tea on someone in the <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Anything else you can think of? I'm thinking like a tray as well. Like you could carry the tea and you could just throw it at them and you can hit them on the head with the tray as you're carrying it as well. Mm -hmm. I think that would work pretty good. Mm -hmm. What other things can you think of for a British street fight? Oh, Yorkshire pudding. A <laughs> Yorkshire pudding would be perfect for this one. Just squish it in their face. Yeah. They, they have food events as well. So this was November. This is getting close to Thanksgiving. I know we don't have Thanksgiving in England, but they could have had like... I guess you couldn't do a Sunday roast because I think these are recorded on Thursdays, but that would be pretty good. All right, what else? doesn't have to be food, of course. Anything else you can think of that would be good for a British street fight? I'm trying to think of something that's very English. I think an umbrella would be pretty good. Like I'm thinking of the classic British person with a briefcase and an umbrella, like the businessman. That would work pretty well as well. I guess anything with the flag on, because you saw the flag straight away. Because you were like, oh, this is in England. I was like, yep, this is in England. This is in Sheffield. Um, probably something. I would, I'm thinking it's something from Mr. Bean. That's English. Something from Mr. Bean? Like his mini? Yeah. <laughs> throw one to his mini in the parking lot? No, throw. Um, Use those brooms that he used for steering his car? Um, you could actually um, put them in. The phone booth, lock them in, and then... Um, <laughs> Tip it over. No, and then you could uh, run the car into it. <laughs> oh my gosh, you've been watching too much early 2000s uh, WWE. That's the type of thing that Vince would set people doing, because you've seen his car explode and things like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that sounds pretty... Wow. I'm going to put you in charge of booking. Okay. Who um, actually survived a car exploding. Who was it that? It was actually on America's Got Talent. Uh-huh. And they were doing a dangerous trick where they tried to escape from a car that was on fire. Uh oh. And it was like it a whole like... bunch of. Did it look like fire. it exploded, but really they got out? Yeah. Wow, that's a pretty good magic trick. A little bit of Houdini right there. All right, let's pause this and let's go ahead and watch the second match. All right, and lad, match two hey. Shelton yeah. Benjamin. <laughs> Shelton Benjamin and Zack Ryder with uh, Rosa Mendez. Um, I looked up Rosa Mendez this time. Um, 
Originally, Melina Latika Rauka, I think, is that's how it's pronounced. That sounds um, French. I find out. Canadian. So, probably that French part of Canada, right? French, uh, Canadian. She's 41 now. I was like, wow, I did not know that. Um, retired good. professional wrestler and professional wrestling manager. She was known for a time under the name Rosa Mendez. She managed former WWE Tag Team Champions Primo and Epico, who we saw, I think, on last week's show. She was also a main cast member on uh, Total Divas. Uh, she grew up in Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm not sure if that's... Um, if I don't think that's the part that does French. Um, I know I've been to certain parts that do, like Montreal, but I'm not sure about Vancouver. I, don't, I haven't been to that side of uh, Canada. Um, and she is of Czech and Costa Rican descent. She was a self-described tomboy growing up and was once suspended from school for fighting. Uh-oh. Uh, she studied business at the University of British Columbia, but dropped out to pursue a career in modeling. In 2004, she was the first North American to win the Piela Dorado, a major Latin American modeling contest. All right, Jay, this was kind of a short one. This was only just five minutes. So what have you got to tell us about this match? So all I had was a powerbomb from the first part. Uh -huh. And here was the best part. <laughs> Rosa Mendes standing up when the ref was counting and didn't mean to make Zack Ryder lose. Uh, yeah, he got counted out. She was kind of sat, I don't know if she was with commentary, but she was kind of sat to the side. Mm -hmm. And then he got thrown out of the ring and she kind of went over to him. And they're kind of both looking at each other's eyes lovingly. And they've been kind of talking about their relationship the last few weeks. And uh, it goes, nine, <laughs> ten, ding, ding, ding. And then Zack's like, what, what the heck? And he tries rolling in the ring, which is way too late. And then he just got a, I think it was a cutter from Shelton Benjamin after the, so he'd already lost and then he got a cutter. And uh, yeah, Rosa went over to comfort him, but it was too late at that point. Shelton's got a huge smile on his face. He had an easy win, didn't have to do anything. I thought it was, I liked that match. I thought that was kind of funny, to be honest. Uh-huh. I thought it was very, it reminded me very much of the um, Saturday show that we used to watch. It was kind of a jokey ending, and there wasn't a massive amount of wrestling in it, but it told a little story, and I thought it was kind of funny that he got counted out, and he gets a loss for that, just because he was concentrating on Rosa and not the match. Um, after that, Jay, now I've started skipping some of these commercials because they're getting repetitive. So there was a Survivor Series promo that talked about John Cena and DX. Um, there was also a promo from Sheamus, and then now we're going to go straight to uh, match no, three. Alright, match three was uh, MVP with Mark Henry against uh, Ted DiBiase with Cody Rhodes. Um, I was really interested in, um, and I didn't know this, he wasn't actually introduced as MVP to begin with. Do you remember what MVP stood for, JJ? No. Montel Vontavious Porter. I had no idea about that one. Now, did you know that he could also have been known as HHA? Or he could also have been known as AAB? Alright, so I looked him up on Wikipedia because I don't know much about MVP because I didn't watch wrestling at this time. So I know about him more since he's come back in 2020. Um, he's older than me, actually. He was born in 1973. Um, his father was a police officer. He joined a gang when he was 12, describing it as a graffiti gang, which later turned into a street gang. He spent six months in a juvenile detention center after a robbery. And he later completed nine and a half years of an 18-year prison sentence for armed robbery and kidnapping. Ooh, which he started at the age of 16. Um, he converted to Islam while in prison and then changed his name. So that was why originally he was, uh, he was born Alvin Antonio Burke Jr. That's AAB. And he became Hassan Hamin Assad. And then later he became Montel Montavious Porter as well. Now, I cut part of this out, JJ, but um, there was a segment with Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase talking backstage, and they talked about how MVP was a really bad guy and, like, he'd done jail time and all that. So that was kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to look that up to see if that was true. Um, it said, Assad entered the professional wrestling business through the help of a corrections officer in his prison, and he started working as a wrestler in the independent circuit in 2002. Wow. So he made his debut 29. His first wrestling match, 29. That's kind of late. Like, we know plenty of people who started wrestling at, like, 16, 17, 18. Um, Billy Starks on an interview this year, this week said that she'd start wrestling much earlier than that. Tommy Dreamer, who we watched on Impact Wrestling, he had his first match, I think he said at 10. So, um, yeah, 29 is like... I don't know how he had his first match at 10. I don't know. Unless it was, like, a high, a middle school match like Mason did. I don't know. All right, what you got for this match then, JJ? You said, I have hey, it covered. A cover for the win? Oh, come on. We talked about it. Now, yeah, one of the reasons you don't have much... The, win, the first cover. 
Oh, for the first cover. The reason we didn't have much is, part, even though this was a 13 minute match, is part of it you wanted to talk about tickets. You wanted to ask how much ticket prices were, uh, like different organisations. So we we're saying how some were cheaper than others. You then asked me, like, how much does WWE charge and AEW? And, but what about Survivor Series? Um, I haven't been to a Survivor Series, so I don't know. The pay per views can be more, but they can be less. Like that SummerSlam I told you about. I got a ticket for, it wasn't much at all. I, I honestly can't remember, but it was like $25. I actually had a ticket for the um, the day before the NXT one, and that was even less. It was like eight dollars, but I couldn't make it because I had a problem with my car, so I had to get my car fixed, and then I I could go the following day. So um, it depends. Um, my WrestleMania ticket was pretty cheap as well, relatively, um, but no, it depends. I've seen other events where I've looked at the prices and went, yeah, we're not going to that. And I talked to you about some of the other ones that yeah, they were just too expensive. All right, so well, you talked about the start. You're like, I know Cody Rhodes is going to interfere. So did he? Yeah. And also, you said you wanted to see uh, Mark Henry do <laughs> World's the World's Strongest Slam to Cody Rhodes uh -huh. on the outside. Except he was a face on this one, though, so he's not just going to take him out for no reason at all. He interfered. He did interfere, but he was the heel. But he's not going to take him out before it even starts. You actually said, like, 30 seconds into the match. Like, how come Cody hasn't interfered yet? And I'm like, because it's the main event. And the match isn't going to be over in 30 seconds. Now I've shown you that Rosa Mendez match that ended in 14 seconds. I think my, you might be no. expecting some slightly quicker finishes. Yeah, it did. The Kelly Kelly watch along that we did. That oh, was yeah. funny. <laughs> you're, expect, you're like, oh, she's going to kick out. No, nope. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. That was over in 14. Dad. That was funny. No, I'm going to have to do that it. occasionally. Not tell you when it is, but sometimes no. we'll do a match. And then sometimes it'll be a proper match like it was this week. And sometimes it'll be one that ends in like one minute. <laughs> Hey Dad, you don't know which can I which. pick one? Are you, watch along? you can, but I tend to do the I tend to do the review ahead of time. Can I try to pick a match that I think you would find interesting? But uh, we can take it in turns. I can find I can pull up the card for next week, and you can have a you can have I a look. I'd like to try and find the their longest match. <laughs> oh my gosh! Hey, how about this then? I'm what I'm going to do right now is then I'm going to pull up the card for next week, and then you can pick the wrestler. And then we can decide uh, who you want to do for your watch along next week, okay? It's the podcast All right, so boss. next week is from, oh, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the Wachovia Center. That's where we hey, went Dad? to see Undertaker. All right, you're listening for the matches mm -hmm. so you can decide. Is Ooh, the podcast over? I know who I want to look at already. No, we're still recording. Uh, Ezekiel Jackson and against Tommy Dreamer. Zack Ryder against Shelton Benjamin. Again, following on from this week, obviously. Uh, Eric Escobar with Vicky Guerrero against Jimmy Wang Yang. So who do you want to pick to do your watch along for? Oh, I'm sorry. There's one more match at the end. Oh, Mark Henry against Cody Rhodes. Oh! Mark Henry. <laughs> you want to do Mark? We already talked about Mark Henry there. Oh, you want to do a watch along for Mark Henry? It's okay. We, match. we can do a watch along. it's probably going to be. I don't think any of his matches will be that long, personally. But... Okay. But that's fine. You can do Mark Henry. That's who you want to do your person yeah. for? All right. Well, I'm going to research because I've, I've heard his name, but I've never seen him wrestle at all. Jimmy Wang Yang. That's who I'm most interested in. We saw Eric Escobar the other week as well. All these people have been on fairly recently, so. All right. Um, did you Except talk for about... Jimmy Yang Yang. Jimmy Wang Yang. Did you talk about who won in this match? I don't think you even talked about who won. You just said MVP there was a cover. Won. MVP did get the win for this one. And, um, yeah, they tried to play distraction, but it didn't actually work. Now, JJ, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about uh, MVP, though, because I kind of split it up. So he debuted in 2002. He wrestled Homicide for the World Heavyweight Championship at Ring of Honor in 2005, February 2005. So that's only like just over two and a half years, and he's already wrestling for a big organization for the World Championship. So he got, he came up really quick. Um, he joined WWE. He actually left WWE not long after this, to be honest, Jay. 2010, uh, he joined New Japan in February 2011, and he spent the next two years with that promotion. Um, then he left New Japan. Since then, he has returned to the independent circuits and made appearances in Impact Wrestling, Ring of Honor, and now he's back on WWE. I'm wondering if that's why, with him starting so late, and him being so good at 47, I'm wondering if him starting later has kind of made his body last a little bit longer. Like, if he'd been wrestling since he was 20, his body would probably be totally beat up by now. So, yeah, I was kind of shocked he was 47. Like, I didn't think he was 35 or anything like that, but... I was still pretty impressed. All right, final question, JJ. I don't think I always remember to do this every week. Last week's rating for the show was 5.33. So this this is out of 10. Okay, so this week's show, better or worse than last week, do you think? And do you want to make a prediction for the rating? I'm probably going to do a prediction for the rating. Okay. 
I'll give it probably a seven. Seven? You went a little high, but they thought it was much better. The crowd gave this one a 6.43. Um, I think I prefer the three matches over four matches. I think the win is four. Some of the matches are just a little too short. You don't really get much of a story going on with those. Um, but no, I thought this one was much better. There was something slightly different going on in each of the matches. And um, that's it. All right, JJ. England. Well, that's, that's not England, is it? Oh, that is England. That's London because I can see Tower Bridge. We've got the um, screensaver on the TV right now. The boat that we traveled on as well. All right, let's get to the watch along. We've already recorded JJ, but for kayfabe purposes, let's go and watch the uh, let's let's go and watch the final deletion. This is Hardy versus Hardy, the final deletion. Um, we're recording out of sequence. Uh, Matt Hardy was in the first match, JJ, so that's why we're watching it. Uh, looks like it's their kid's first birthday. I didn't quite see the name. Um, it's, it had an M in it. Did it say Max or something on yeah. the? Yeah. Okay. It said Max. Maxel? It looks like M-A-X-E-L. I don't know. Uh, I think that's Matt Hardy's wife. Uh, oh, we've got captions. Matt is not sick. Oh, he's not sick. Moreover, today is for Maxel, not for Matt. No one else but Maxel. Oh, did I just put did I put subtitles on for this? Oh, Jay, that might be a great Do way of doing it. Is that? Oh, yeah, I got the subtitles on. That's why I can see Good. what they're saying, I think. Good. It looks like it. I certainly had some, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, now I have it on the bottom. So they're definitely having the first birthday party. Um, I picked this one because it's one of the cinematography um, type matches. Like, I know you liked Undertaker's match at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever seen this one before? All right. So and I thought also you'd like it, the fact that it's brother versus brother as well. Because I know you like brothers when they wrestle. Even though John Cena's already told us twice tonight, no, no. wrestling with your brother. No. He says, I have invited all of you here because these events must be documented. Please let this candle, my beautiful wife, this candle will burn for eternity, representing you, and it will only be extinguished when Brother Nero has truly been deleted. Ah, do you know who Brother Nero is? That's Jeff. I thought that. And deleted. I also thought, I'm not sure if we get to see the mower of lawns in this one as well. You know Daddy's t-shirt? I'm not sure if that appears in this one. Or the chair of wheels. I think that's actually in a different one, but we'll see. I thought about putting SummerSlam on for you as well, with the Hardys wrestling together. That was one of the other things, but I thought the cinema, the cinematic match would be... Oh, he's a... Uh, oh, that's sweet. You see how he's cutting the grass to make his uh, Hardy Boys logo? Yeah. That must have taken ages. I don't think that... That looks real, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's any uh, cinematography. Oh, that's Jeff. Jeff's doing his as well. So I guess that's Jeff's house. That's a lot of blue. I like it, though. Mm -hmm. Carolina Blue? Yep. And now he's getting his uh, guitar out. Guitar. He's gonna play some tunes. Picking a few tunes out there. Mm -hmm. Oh, Vanguard 1. Do you know what Vanguard 1 is, JJ? Mm -mm. That's his uh, drone. That's Matt Hardy's drone. So he's looking for Jeff. There you go. You can see it through the window now. Mm -hmm. It has uh -oh. a camera. Yep. Jeff does not look too happy about that. Unfortunately, Vanguard 1 died last year. Uh, Jericho destroyed it. <laughs> Good. But yeah, he's got his little camera on there. As well. Oh, he's going in there. Oh, there's lots of them. Or are they just like bugs? I don't know. Whoa! Oh! Just like Hold Elias. On. Just like Elias with his guitar. He squints it around a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Jeff is doing. And now, uh, that must be Vanguard 1 there. It's projecting Matt Hardy and he's obviously telling him, I want a match with you, Brother Nero. Oh, actually, it says on the bottom, doesn't it? You are now speaking to Man God or something. I missed it. I command you to meet me at the property tonight. Uh, we will determine who owns the rights to the hottie? Who is the soul? I don't know if these captions are accurate or not. I don't know. Oh, it says on the bottom, Impact moves to Thursdays. Um... I don't think that... They moved back to Tuesdays, so I guess they switched again. And now he's chasing him out of his house with a... Whoa, that's a pretty big house. Mm-hmm. Just the same size as ours. No, this is way bigger. That's and he just swatted another one with his hand, another drone, and he's off on his motorbike now. Uh, oh, there's... <laughs> there's oh, he's trying to catch Vanguard 1. I don't think he's going to catch Vanguard 1. Nope. Even on a motorcycle? It went over the lake. That was a good decision, and Jeff's upset now. And you can see Vanguard ones going all the way back to Jeff's property. 
Oh, there it is. Mower of lawns, JJ. Uh-huh. Woohoo. <laughs> he's doing it no-handed. That's not going to be that accurate, I don't think. Oh, he's got Vanguard 1 in his hand now as well, so he's returned he's... to him. Oh, is, is he mowing up his design, the uh -huh. nice design that he made? Yeah. Oh, Rockstar Spud's on. What's he on for? Oh, because it's probably for Impact Wrestling, so it's probably just talking about it. Yeah, they're talking about the new show. Impact moves to Thursdays. Uh, I'm not sure what year this is. I should have looked, actually. I want to say 2016, but I'm not really that sure. I remember Mason and I were kind of watching. This is just when we started watching wrestling, Mason and I. Because I remember seeing this and was like, I didn't I didn't actually like it to begin with. Oh, we got some fireworks, JJ. Mm -hmm. They're pretty big ones. He's got, like, the sand pit there. So he's uh, getting, getting them ready. Senor Benjamin. <laughs> he says he's preparing the battlefield for the massacre. <laughs> All right, looks like has Matt got some. Was that gasoline? Mm -hmm. Uh, yep. Well, that's gonna be explosive then, right? Uh huh. Uh, please ply generously to the battlefield. It takes a lot of fuel to delete a brother Nero. <laughs> Dusk is approaching. The final deletion is upon us. Come, Rebecca, let's swim ourselves. Alright, fade to black. Nighttime. I can see some lights. The ref oh, that's the referee's car. And uh, <laughs> the referee's face is pretty good. He looks a little bit worried, like there's a ring? And it's all... I'm not sure where the lighting's coming from. Uh, there's a few on the outside, but it's still really dark, though, right? Mm -hmm. You can't really see that well. And uh, Matt's telling him, you're the man I saw in my premonition. You have one job tonight, to count the pinfall, or record the submission. And when it's over, circumstances do you resuscitate Brother Nero. He's going to try and choke him out. Mm -hmm. Oh, he must be deleted. Delete, mm -hmm. delete, delete. Mm -hmm. I think Jeff is probably going to win. <clears throat> you think Jeff's going to win? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll have to see. And he's doing some sort of prayer now, it said. He said he had to summon someone. Is that a violin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's playing his violin. And there's a lot of camera cuts here. It's a little complicated to watch what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. And that looks like... Brother Nero's arrived now on his motorbike. Jeff Hardy. Yep. Mm, got a yellow shirt on. I don't think he's even seen that he's there yet. No, he hasn't seen it. He just said something. Ah, Brother Nero, I knew you'd come this. Match we're about to have will be your true Armageddon. He's still not looking at him. Oh, for your deletion. Oh, now they cut into James Storm. I think Mason has a James Storm t-shirt. I think it's one of his favourite ones. I think it's that sorry, not sorry one. Mm -hmm. You know, the one where he gets a uh, super kick to the head. <laughs> and there's a big crack in his face. That Mason really likes. And he, I think he's actually grown out of it. I think it's more for you now, but I don't think he wants to give it up, does he? It's one that he want, he really likes, so he's keeping it. I do remember, that's the thing I didn't like about this. Like, the trees are in the way, and sometimes you can't always see what's going on. All right, well, Matt got the first punch in. Come on, JJ, you've got to talk, buddy. I'm not going to... I I think we should stop doing watch-alongs. You never want to talk anymore. You always say you want to do a watch-along. This is kind of real. Anyway? Well, this is kind of real. That's why it's different. This is Normally, it's just a regular old wrestling match. That's why I picked mm -hmm. this one, because it's so different. Like, you're not even talking about it. They have, like, Super torches West. on top of the... I know. Torches on top of each of the ring posts. Oh, That's kind of different. I have seen... Splash. Um, a one, clip of two. survival that Mason... Mason watches survival, and there's torches out... Kind of look like that. Uh huh. And when we're saying torches, we're talking about American What's that? torches. You know what an English torch is? No. Flashlight. Oh. So we talk. Um, I have What's no that? idea coal? what that is. It looks like. Coal. It looks like a vine of some description. Coal. Oh, it's coal. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. That's kind of weird. All right. Well, Jeff's thrown him into it, and I dragged him into the middle of the room. Oh, leaves. I think it is leaves because I think it's one of those um things where the plant grows up. 
So it's got something to cling on to. It makes it easier to climb up, like uh, ivy or something. Twist of fate. I don't know much moves anyway. We gotta get you hey. watching more classic Hardy matches, I think. Every week, Hardy matches. Kick out. There you go. Mm -hmm. Give us some. I assume it's just one fall. And it's Ooh. freezing! Kendo stick to the back. It's freezing. What, downstairs. on the show or down here? Downstairs. I switched the heater off while we're recording because I didn't want it to interfere with Actually, it. It's Kendo on. stick to the leg. You got a blanket on. You're wearing a t shirt in the winter. I You're know. like, I'm wearing a sweater. Like, I'm wearing a t shirt. We got a snow day tomorrow because that's how cold it is. And you decided, oh, I'm just going to wear a t-shirt. And then you're wondering why you're cold. I think I might have an answer for you. No. Get your son a sweater, lad. Well, I have a sweater that... and I wear it in the classroom. You can wear it at home as well. All right, we've got a ladder now. Oh, he's got the ladder up against his neck, JJ. I think that might hurt, right? Mm hmm I guess there's no rope, rope, rope breaks or anything because that was over five seconds, right? Mm-hmm. So I guess this is no rules. I guess that would make sense. It's a DQ. No DQ. I guess if it's an ultimate deletion or whatever. Oh, sorry, the final deletion. If it's a final deletion, I guess you wouldn't have rules, would you, for that one? Uh, it looked like he was trying to bite his back for a minute, but... All right. Looks like he was going for a rock bottom as well, but he said no. Rock bottom! No, that was a twist of fate. Uh -huh. Jeff got one in that time. Why aren't they not using... All right, he's getting his shirt off. Why aren't they using the torches yet? Uh, I don't know. I wonder if they're one of those that's just for effect. Remember, like Swanton the Tom Bomb. Nice, cool. Remember, we had the candles where you just put a light in. You put a an battery in, and it just looks like it's a candle, but it's not yeah. really a candle. Uh, I wonder if those torches are the same then. No, it's blowing. Oh yeah, the wind's it is. blowing. So, and it's <clears throat> moving. Plus, it looks very real. So it's probably okay. Weird. Oh, that one on the outside is. I'm not sure the ones on the top of the ring post are, though. They probably are. I don't know. The don't... wind is blowing. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. All of them are real. The ones on the outside definitely are. I'm not sure about the ones on the ring post. I can't see. Oh, yeah, there is a flame. Yeah, there is a flame there. All right, we've got the ladder sign of stretch between two corner posts. Oh, my gosh, here we go. Jeff's going up into the tree, JJ. Oh, all the way up to the top. I think that's high enough, Jeff. No. Holy cow, no way. Yes. That is way too yes. high. That That's is not safe. safe. That is safe. He's that going for it. Safe. That is safe. Swamp top. Oh, 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 he moved out of the way, I think. Oh, he just landed on that ladder. It looks like his ears bleeding. Ouch, I'm not surprised. That was ridiculously high, straight onto a ladder. Mm -hmm. All right, well, he's going for the pin. No, sir. Not, the not yet. Oh my gosh. He's got a big bend in it, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. High risk, it's high reward. But an actual real ladder. No reward this normal time. One, normal ladders in WWE are fake ladders. Uh -huh. They just look real. For the so ultimate that was deletion. A real one, then. Yeah, ultimate deletion, you got to have a proper ladder. Chair to the back of uh, Jeff. And what we got? Oh, looks like we. Oh, here we go, JJ. We've got one of those torches now. He's lighting it. Oh, is that a firework? Yeah. That's a firework. Whoa! He's firing him across the ring at Jeff. <laughs> Jeff's got a dustbin lid. Oh, sorry, a trash can lid. <laughs> That's not safe. He should hide under the ring. Doug, exactly. Get down. Why are you stood up? That looks pretty cool, though, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it looks like a war right now. <laughs> it does. Yeah, you need to get out of the way there, Jeff. And now we've got a lot of smoke over there as well from those fireworks, so it's going to be even less easy to see what's going on. And breathe. So. Uh-huh. Oh, we're near the end of this match, unfortunately. We only have, like, four minutes left. Uh, he's got some sort of gardening device right now. Oh, you can see the turnbuckle. It's then. a rake. Do, do you see how sharp the turnbuckle was? No. The, uh, the claw thing that kind of connects to it? No. That's like um, Jake Parnell got in his mouth. Oh! Jeff Hardy's got some fireworks now, JJ. He's going to fire them at Matt. There's a lot of grass there. You'd think that that grass could catch on fire, possibly. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Let me guess you want to do that. Oh, he's got his boat. He's got his tin boat down. By oh, Jeff's pretty close to him, though. He's, like, right on top of him now. He's only, like, six feet away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, Matt might not even be in there anymore. And then could have cut away, and then he is in there. I don't know. I think they're going in the water, JJ. I think. Mm -hmm. They probably are. 
I hope that didn't make the podcast cut. Nope. I think it might have picked it up. No. Nope. We'll have to see. Thankfully, the only... Oh, they're in the water now. It didn't look like there was any water. Why do you think you had a boat there? <laughs> <laughs> probably to... Decoration? No, probably to put someone in, roll the boat over. Brother Nero has been flushed, he just said. Uh, oh, whoa! Who's That's that? not Brother Nero. Brother Nero has been uh, revitalized by going in that water by the look of it, JJ. No, it's probably someone else. I don't think so. Who's that? It's uh, whoever. Oh, he's got a taser to him now. Taser to the back of him to let him out. Yeah, Matt needed a little bit of help then. Mm -hmm. Alright, what's he getting from the boat? Now, I see, I would call that a torch. You'd call it a flashlight, though. They're trying to find him. Where did he go? And I don't see him anymore. Perhaps he retreated back to the lake, right? Until next time. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Good cliffhanger, right? Oh, no, he's on the floor. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. he dead? Probably not. Him. Is he going to pin him? Yeah, he's going to pin him now. Probably not him, anyway. That was an easy Probably pin. not Brother Nero. It might not be. Oh, it's not Brother Nero. Good call, I JJ. I told you. No! And plus, plus, he had, plus he had to end up handcuffed. Like, <laughs> to... No! Where are you, Brother Nero? It looks like he's in the lake. By the... Oh, there he is. There's Brother Nero. He hid. Yeah, they're on, like, the sand pile. This is where all the fireworks were, right? Uh -huh. Isn't that where he planted them? Mm -hmm. All right, we don't have that much and then he time needs to left. Put he said put gasoline. Oh, he did, yeah. All over the place. He did, that's right. Hey, good memory. I forgot about that part. All right, on, Brother, Brother Nero's got him in a chokehold right now. He said, come on, brother. Uh, it looks like he might be the one that gets deleted the way it's going right now. They're just rolling around in the sand, but he's still got that chokehold applied. Oh, his arm's just gone limp. I don't know if the ref's gonna... Oh, he just let the hold go. Did Jeff decide to let him off the hook? He's yeah. looking at the logo. Oh, he's looking at the Hardy Boys logo. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's climbed up to the top of it. No, you're not gonna... Jeff, yes. what are you doing? Why are you that jump... is so... Why that are is you so... jumping from that up there? So... Oh, no, he's got the flat... Oh! That is so... He's gonna set it all on fire, JJ. Mm -hmm. They're flipping back to the birthday cake, and they've got the lighter... And um, I think he's just going to drop it down and burn him, right? Oh, is he going to jump and set him on fire? Oh, they got the fire go. Oh! Oh, the heart, the sign caught on fire, so he kind of bailed to the side to get out of the way. Mm -hmm. They should get out. That must be pretty warm there, right? Mm-hmm. That would keep you from being cold, JJ. They should get uh, out. Hardy sign that's on fire. They should get out. One, two, three. Oh, he did. Mm. Brother Nero got deleted. I guess that's not the result you wanted then from that reaction. <laughs> you wanted to see him jump from the top Get of the out. Hardy Boy sign, right? Get out the way. <laughs> He's celebrating with it all on fire behind him. And uh, that's it, JJ. I wonder if he put it all over the sand. All right. What I am curious, though, is how many stars are you giving that match? What did you think of that match? I thought it was pretty good. I'll give it a 9.99. Out of? 10. Well, that is pretty impressive. 9.99. All right. That was a good one. I know one. I gave it that only because... If Matt Hardy... If Jeff Hardy would have won, you would have given it 10. A, yeah. I thought it was pretty fun. There is some other ones if you want to see them at some point. Yes. I think there's the ultimate deletion, which I think I yes. messed up earlier. And yes. um, there's definitely some other ones. So perhaps we'll wait until we see Matt Hardy again, and then we'll save it. We'll watch that as one of our watch-alongs as well, okay? All right, now is when you do your end bit, because this is the last section.